Welcome back to Jeff Rand Live. Now, the bad weather has also put pay to today's encounter between the bosses of Britain's biggest banks and the government. Nevertheless, Vince Cable remains in belligerent mood. The business secretary has renewed his threat to impose additional taxes on bonuses and is fully prepared to see some banks depart from the city as a result. There is already a series of measures in place to curb excessive payouts. Sky News understands that RBS, the bank that's 84% owned by the taxpayer, is attempting to secure a £50,000 cap on cash bonuses. Here with me at the Gherkin is Professor Chris Roebuck of the Cass Business School. Alongside him is William Wright, the editor of Financial News. Financial News, that's correct, isn't that's it? Correct, yes. Good. Nice to see you both. Thanks for coming in. Um, Professor Roebuck, uh, clearly Vince Cable can bear down on British banks, but out there in the city there are plenty of foreign banks. Can they just cock a snook at him? I think it's fair to say, if you, if you look at the numbers, we probably have four British banks and maybe 20, 25 international banks. And the question is, do they bear any responsibility for lending out to the general public? The answer is no. They're here to do international business. And does it have to be here they do it? Possibly not. So your answer, I guess, is he can bear down on them but they can find a back door. They could well do if they feel that the cost benefit of staying in London is outweighed by the taxes they have to pay. They are bankers. What do you think? Uh, there are two issues here. One, the staff, two, the banks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the banks could just get up and go, and I guess that's true of Deutsche and Credit Suisse. They could retrench back to their home base. Or the star bankers could just flip over. I think, yeah, absolutely. They, the banks, all the bankers could get up and go and they threat, they've been threatening over the past few years to do precisely that. Um, the yeah, challenge... But not actually doing well, it this is, this is the point. When you actually go in and look at... If, if, the bank is, if a bank says it's going to go, where exactly is it going to go to? Deutsche Bank is not any time soon going to relocate its international investment banking headquarters back to Frankfurt, where the regulation and where the tax system is even more... Uh, tough, uh, even more detrimental to the bank than it is in London. And equally, the thousands of staff who work at investment banks in the city, even if they don't like the tax regime or the regulatory regime, they can't move anywhere else in Europe because the rules are pretty much exactly the same across Europe. And then you get into the much more technical or, or practical question of moving to Singapore or outside of the European Union. You get into much bigger questions there than simply questions of taxation. Do you remember that uh, game, uh, Professor Roebuck, it was called My Bluff or something, they used to go, yes, bluff. Indeed, I do. So is that what Vince Cable is doing to these banks? Uh, yes, we've heard there that the Germans wouldn't retrench to Frankfurt, wouldn't they? He is to a degree. I think Vince is trying to push it as much as he can, and I suspect that George Osborne is seeing where it's going to go, because, let's face it, the logic of the situation is if you can get more tax revenues at this point in time out of the banks in London, but you don't lose them completely because they go, then that's potentially a good thing to do. In terms of will they go, I think it's fair to say that some of the star performers could look at their take home and say, actually, I think I might go. But for the vast majority of people out there in the city, particularly with the comment about Europe's now pretty standard in terms of what you're going to pay, are you going to say to your family, right, wife, children, schooling, we're off to Singapore, we're off to Hong Kong? Well, what do you think about, can I just ask you about the, the nature of the bonus and how's it paid? Uh, people say, well, it's got to, there's got to be a limit to the, to the cash element of this, say 20%, so on a million you'd get 200,000 and the rest is in shares. It sounds that tough to me. 800,000 pounds worth of shares in yeah. Deutsche Bank, thank it's, you very much. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty difficult to feel, feel sorry for bankers or anybody mm -hmm. earning yeah. uh, a million dollar bonus. I suppose if, if you're going to feel sorry for them, then this is about the, the only year you could do that because not only will their cash element be capped at 20%, but they could actually end up paying, uh, getting zero in year one because they'd have to pay tax up front on that. Um, I think actually the issue about how bonus is paid is not the real political issue here. That's a structural issue. It's one that regulators and politicians can deal with. It comes back to how big are the bonuses, how, sh how big should those bonuses be, uh, and how are they calculated? And that's the real problem there. Absolutely. Many thanks for coming in, William. Nice to see you. Professor you. Roebuck, nice Thank to you. see you too.